Some Things Change, a short story written and narrated by Robert Fairhead from the Tall and True Writer's Website. Perth, Western Australia, 1979. It's a hot summer afternoon with no sign of the Frio doctor. Despite the heat, I'm climbing the tree in Gran's backyard with my brothers and boy cousins, while our girl cousins chat in a circle in the shade of the back veranda. Like the other boys, I'm in shorts with no shirt or shoes. Our tomboy cousin's up here too, and though she's wearing a dress, she's also barefoot. Mum and my aunts sit with Gran at the picnic table on the veranda. The women are shooing flies from salad bowls, refilling their wine glasses from a cask on the table, and laughing over shared gossip. (laughs) Dad and the uncles are on barbecue duty, prodding and turning sizzling steaks and sausages, drinking cold beers from an esky, and discussing the latest news, including this morning's headline, about an Aboriginal protest. You've got to understand that Aborigines are different from us, Dad says, responding to an uncle's comment, criticising the protest. And we need to respect this. But I do, my uncle insists. I respect all the abos who play footy for East Perth. The backyard erupts into blokey laughter, (laughs) drowning out the women and girls on the veranda and us kids in the tree. East Perth's my favourite footy team and I have autographs from several Aboriginal players. Dad doesn't like me calling them abos, so I swing down to a lower branch to get closer to the conversation. There's a rustle of leaves, and I glance back to see my tomboy cousin crouched on the branch behind me. We exchange nods, and I return my attention to the barbecue. That's not what I meant, and you know it, (laughs) Dad tells my uncle over the laughter. (laughs) I saw a TV documentary that explained how Aborigines have a deep connection with the land, and it's why they go walkabout, to spend time on it. Well, my uncle responds, winking at the other uncles, they'd better not go walkabout when playing for East Perth, or they'll lose my respect. There's more blokey laughter. (laughs) (laughs) Dad shakes his head, and another uncle opens the esky, and hands around more beers. And with a loud chorus of, Cheers! The barbecue discussion shifts to another headline. I'm about to start climbing again, when my cousin asks, Do you think it's true? What? I reply, turning to face her on the branch. She's a year or two younger than me, with freckles and long fair hair, and she looks familiar, but I can't remember her name. I've got lots of cousins, and I've got a bad memory for names. But Mum says that's not my fault. It's how my brain works. Do you think Aborigines go walkabout to spend time on the land? I don't know, I answer with a shrug. We don't know any Aborigines. There aren't any at my school. And the only ones I ever see are on TV, or hanging about in parks, or outside shops, or playing footy for East Perth. My cousin nods and adds, We had an Aboriginal girl in my class at school, but she's gone now. Where? I ask. I don't know, my cousin mimics my shrug response. She and her little brother used to sit together in the playground at recess and lunch, but they never had lunch boxes. And then one day, she wasn't at school, and I haven't seen her or her brother since. Perhaps they went walkabout, I suggest. My cousin nods again. Perhaps, she echoes, standing up and grabbing a higher branch. Race you to the top. I consider chasing her, but although she's younger than me, my cousin's a good climber, so I let her go. And instead, I sit on the branch and stare over Gran's roof at the horizon, reflecting on what Dad said about Aborigines and their connection with the land. If East Perth's Aborigines went walkabout, would they come back and play footy for the team on the weekend? And what about the Aboriginal girl and her brother at my cousin's school? Have they gone walkabout? And if so, could they reappear in the playground one day? Below me, Dad and the uncles are carrying the esky and cooked steaks and sausages to the picnic table. And Mum is calling for us kids to climb down from the tree. So these are questions for another time. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm Robert Fairhead from Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writer's Website. Some Things Change was my submission for the Big Issue Fiction Edition 2023. The Big Issue's brief was broad. Stories of all kinds. Literary, comedy, romance, sci-fi, crime, and everything in between. From 500 to 3,000 words. I regularly submit 500-word short stories to the Australian Writer Centre's Furious Fiction Writing Challenges. And the temptation was to write a shorter-length story similar to my furious fictions. But I wanted to stretch myself and my writing, so I wrote a longer short story, 
just over 2,700 words, consisting of three vignettes, set in different locations and times, but with a common thread. Two protagonists, a pair of cousins, exploring Australia's history and relationship with Indigenous peoples. Perth, Western Australia, 1979, is the first vignette. There are elements of autofiction in this story. I grew up in Perth in the 1960s and 70s and supported the East Perth footy team. The Frio Doctor is the late afternoon sea breeze that calls the city and suburbs on hot summer days. And I was exposed to casual and overt racism towards Indigenous Australians as a boy when Aboriginal people were called abos and worse. I also have a cousin named Jenny, who has fair red hair and freckles. And after sharing this story, she reminded me that we climbed trees together when we were younger. But, please forgive me for revealing this, Jen, she's one year older than me. And we never overheard the conversation between the dads and uncles at the family barbecue. So while this story draws on my life, it's mostly my imagination. Except, sadly, for the parts about the discrimination and lack of understanding endured by Indigenous Australians. I hope you enjoyed the first instalment of Some Things Change. You can read this and all my short stories, blog posts and other writing at tallandtrue.com. You can also buy my short story collections from the Amazon Kindle, Apple Books and Kobo online bookstores. Links are available in the show notes. The second vignette of Some Things Change, London, England, 1992, will be released shortly. In the meantime... Check your feed or the podcast website, tallandtrueshortreads.com, for earlier episodes from seasons one to three. And follow or subscribe to the podcast and rate and review it by your favourite podcasting app. Doing so helps me share my storytelling. You can support this podcast financially by making a small one-off or regular donation via the ACAS supporter page. You'll find a link in the show notes. Finally, please tell your family and friends about Tall and True short reads and the Tall and True writer's website.